Um, okay, so this isn't actually a poem. It's a, I think it's a rant that I found on Tumblr. And not a rant, sorry. It's just a free-flowing piece of writing. And I don't actually know the proper person who wrote this. I'm not even sure whether the person who sourced this is the person who wrote it or whether they just thought it was pretty fucking amazing as well and decided to post it up. So I'm going to source that person, but if you find that um, that's not actually the writer, then by all means comment down and I will change it. Um, okay. The girls are never supposed to end up together. I watched that movie with Ellen Page and Alia Shawcat. The roller skating movie. The one where Ellen Page and Alia Shawcat are best friends. Each other's only comfort in their podunk town. They meet each other. And they hug. They dance. And they tell each other, I love you. And Ellen meets a skinny boy who plays in a band. It doesn't even work out with a boy. But that's almost tangent here. The girl was never the real option. I think that's why it's really difficult for girls. For me. We follow narratives, and our fingertips trace the contours of stories that we love, and we long to escape within the confines of our own lives. Meet your boyfriend in the pouring rain and yak down his mask. Kiss him upside down. Run with your boyfriend to the front of the ferry and throw your arms out to the sides and scream, I'm king of the world! If you are a girl in love with a boy, your possibilities are infinite. If there is a special girl in your life, you love her as a friend. You love her as a friend, but she becomes less important to you as you grow. And you leave her behind for a boy. She might even stand next to you when you get married to that boy. And she might catch the bouquet of flowers that you throw to her. You're giving her permission to move on, move away from you. It's a ceremony of separation. But if you should fall in love with a girl, and loving and falling in love are two very distinct things. The first kiss is the end. You've all seen the movie, or the television show, or the after-school special, or you've read the book that was banned from your school's library for containing sexual content. Your story begins with a lie, and climaxes in a truth, and ends with a kiss. In the movie of your life, 45 minutes are devoted to you figuring out how to say that you want to kiss girls, and another half hour is devoted to people's objection. And maybe the last 15 minutes is you kissing the girl. Maybe you don't even get to kiss a girl. Maybe she tells you that she's flattered, but she doesn't bat for your team. The critics soon. It's realistic, they say, so realistic, to depict the struggle of the modern team. The heartbreak of irresolvable incompatibility. Isn't that always what celebrities cite in their divorces? Irreconcilable differences? And so... You're lying on the floor of your bathroom, your knees curled to your chest. Or you're on the sofa with a pint of ice cream. Or you're in bed watching your favourite sad movie on Netflix. And the collective weight of all that you consume settles on your shoulders, leans in and whispers. You were never meant to fall in love. You were never meant to fall in love. Your story ends in tears or in death. Jack Twist was bludgeoned to death with a tire iron and Ennis Del Mar was left alone in his closet to dance with an empty shirt. L.B. Grant found Dale Thomason swinging by a noose in the apartment that th had been their safe house. There was spite. And he sank down to his knees and cradled Dale's bare feet. And he cried. The Motion Pictures Association of America acts Lana Tisdale and Brandon Tina's sex scenes. But they didn't have a problem with the extended shot of Lana cradling Brandon's corpse in her fragile arms and falling asleep next to his body. Love and intimacies are ours only in death. Or so it would seem. I don't want to die. 
Isn't that a very human experience, not wanting to die? When does anyone who looks like me get to grow old and raise their grandchildren and hold her wife's hands as the skin wrinkles, turns translucent? Sometimes my father asks me if I will ever date a man. Sometimes he doesn't ask. You are attracted to men, and you dream about falling in love with men, he says, as if he can will his imaginary daughter into existence merely by speaking about her. Or maybe he's just looking out for my safety. He's seen the movies too. He loves me. He doesn't want me to die. Okay, yeah, that's it. So, I mean, I think... I really liked it, especially the ending. It just seems like society's view, not society's view, more like all the all the movies about a young teen or books about a young teen finding out her sexuality. It does always end with a kiss. It's always that struggle forward. There's never a life after. There's never a nice little story about a lesbian dyke person just sitting in a cafe having her lunch going to meet her wife and then growing out old I mean personally I've never read a story like that so when I read this article writing thing I mean it really hit me and then the ending where she says her dad doesn't want her to die that's true because it seems like all these people all these characters in, in these books and the movies they're only given their wish of being with their loved ones when something terrible happens, so... I mean, I really liked it. And, um, sorry for the stumbling of words. I mean, I, I get very tongue-tied very easily, so I tend to stumble over my tongue all the time, working on my enunciation. Okay, so that's about it. I hope you enjoyed.